Get back. Quickly. Get back alive. Get back in one piece. Run and say to your wife, I'm back. Don't worry, I'm here. The expedition went well. They've paid me quite well. But Nima does worry. She doesn't want him to set off again. With the money he's earned, Gurman has installed a TV in the lodge. And they're starting to make a profit. With their family's help, they've even been able to send their children to school in Kathmandu. But this prosperity comes at a price. The Sherpas are employed as porters at high altitudes by Himalayan climbers. These Sherpa guides do not always come back down. Gurman's brother did not come back. And Nima is haunted by nightmares and horror stories. The sick and injured are piggybacked down Everest Valley. The helicopters don't fly in fog and are too costly for the Sherpas. As for the yaks, they won't tolerate people on their backs. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> German has a bold idea to help his family's finances. But before launching into the project, he consults the village's senior Lama. His madcap idea came to him when he was looking at the horses on prayer flags. He wants to buy a horse which has been broken in and hire it out to tourists to earn his living. He first asks the Lama to bless a roll of prayer flags with images of the wind horses, the Lung Ta. Halfway through the ceremony, he confides his secret. The Lama kindly gives him encouragement. He prays for his protection and for the arrival of a horse in the village, a living wind horse, a real life Lungta. No one has ever thought of riding a horse here before. The valley is far too steep. Outside, the scent of burning juniper fills the monastery. Gurman, eager to set off in search of his horse, waits with the other believers. Lamas in hats leave for faraway ceremonies. Sherpa women part to sow seeds. And Sherpa guides get ready to tackle the heights. None of them would do this without having received a kata of beige silk, thrown blessed rice, or inhaled the intoxicating sacred smells. Bolstered by these rituals, they go their separate ways following their own destinies. The wind horses and their prayers 
are carried off in all directions. Prayers for the dead brother and thoughts of hope. The sound of the wind horses fluttering in the wind signals the arrival of a real horse for Nima and German. A horse which German will go to find in another valley. A horse he hopes to hire out to foreigners passing through. A horse which will carry the sick and save lives. Now they have made the decision. German can go to the valley of the horses. The animals which scamper around the monastery are not for sale. They are sacred incarnations, horses without a master, left to roam freely. German goes bounding along for 10 hours on the trot and 2,000 meters below, he flies along. One thought preoccupies him, how to find the money. German has brought with him all his savings and some valuable objects to sell. Apparently, a domestic horse can cost 50 times the price of his plane ticket. He'll have to borrow money in Kathmandu. German is counting on the support of a cousin, Tsawang, who has gone into selling mountaineering equipment. He finds the capital of Nepal balancing on a knife edge. On the one hand, the revolution of Pachanda's Maoist party, which promises democracy to the people and social justice to the poor. On the other, the unseeing monarchy, which continues to parade along in front of an astonishing cavalry. As if to goad, the royal family travels along in a carriage with pomp and contempt. In the Tamil district, items are bought and sold, made and copied especially equipment offered to the Sherpas by the expeditions. German's cousin is there. He's welcoming, but careful to check the authenticity of German's items. Tawang offers. German spent his childhood in a Buddhist monastery. That was what his father wanted. Today, the young Sherpa has mixed feelings. would like to say thank you and enjoy the here and now. But he remembers the demanding days of his childhood, the monotonous chanting, 
and having to sit still for hours. He especially remembers the runaways, the ruckuses, bunking off, games, and dreaming of freedom. He remembers moments of sharing, and then finally leaving with Nima to follow his chosen path. He often remembers the restrictions of monastic school life. And he remembers the pleasure of discovering the world through books. He also remembers the interminable ceremonies, which made his head spin with exhaustion. From this strange time at the monastery, a nostalgia for the miracles of light has stayed with him, and an inclination to pray. He has also retained a taste for these extraordinary rides on horseback. These imaginary gallops on raging creatures, which drove away evil spirits and scattered demons to the wind. The valley of the horses is not so far away. It threads its way towards the more accessible mountains, packed with tourists in the summer months. A week's walk from Kathmandu, the Mustang and Tibetan horses went over the Annapurna Pass. They are bred here and crossed with Indian horses and they are hired out to trekkers at a good price. A horse owner earns as much in a few hours as a porter usually earns in a month. And it doesn't look that hard. German throws himself into his search. He is untroubled by the 40 kilometers of mountains and passes on his journey, but he is constantly stricken by fear. He worries whether he'll be able to convince any trader to sell a horse to a novice who knows nothing about them. He'll just have to ask and keep on asking. <laughs> All along the way, tourism is changing the face of the valleys. Stonemasons are hard at work. Everything is in motion. Religion is also caught up in the whirlwind. The Nepalese and their prayers are carried along by a new rhythm. Here's one he likes the look of.
This time, the horses are for sale. The horse trader shows German his three horses. Is he getting a bargain or being sold a pup? The first contact is tough for a beginner. <laughs> Finally, the grey mare lets German approach. She seems to be sweet-natured and in good health. Maybe she'll make a good horseman out of him. The horse trader is amused by how unsure and apprehensive German is and by his lack of skill. He helps his client to mount the horse. German may have climbed Everest three times, but mounting a horse is a different matter altogether. The negotiation is done Tibetan fashion for a win-win outcome. German names his price. German cannot possibly return to the village and present his horse without a full complement of tack. She must at least have a collar with bells and a tassel and a Tibetan saddle blanket. He would like to call his beautiful mare Karma. Karma means destiny, but he knows it's not up to him to decide. He'll call her Karma for the time being. Tomorrow, Buddha and the Lamas may decide otherwise. Near Lukla Airport, German feels sure he will find some foreigners. He offers his services to the lodge nearest the landing strip. There's sure to be a well-heeled rider who would like to ride Karma. Yeah. 
The reason? Kathmandu has been blockaded. The people are demanding for the king to be deposed. Planes are carrying only bags and fresh hopes. A new life lies ahead for German. He'll cross rivers without getting his feet wet and climb at Karma's pace. He'll have to accept looks of astonishment and have faith close to the edge. Take incomprehension, refusals and disinterest in his stride. He'll be part of the march of history. No, no one needs a horse here either. At this rate, the cousin in Kathmandu won't be getting his money back for some time. German can't get network coverage, and he promised to contact his cousin, Sawang, in Kathmandu. It's just in the last week that it has been possible for Sawang to receive emails in his shop. The internet is the new wind horse, and the cyber cafe its monastery. As they climb higher, Karma becomes less and less sprightly. The smallest obstacle makes her stall. The more German pulls on her leash, the more she refuses. She's paralyzed and shaken by a caravan of yaks passing her and freezes. of the gorge encourages her to set off again with renewed vigor. But once again, she is not so sure-footed and she hesitates and falters. Now German is no longer thinking about hiring out his mare, but whether they will ever get back to the village. Will she crack before they do? They are at a height of 3,500 meters, and maybe Karma can't tolerate the altitude. When they finally arrive on the higher plateaus, German drags Karma to the gates of a veterinary hospital, the only one in the Kumbu Valley. She has small wounds which are infected. 
probably knocks from other animals' horns. The vet is not happy. <laughs> The village is still two days away, two days on the edge of the void. No one has ever tried this before. The raven wouldn't dare do this with the yak, but tries its luck with the horse. Karma is better again. Now, when she has to be pulled, it's because she's resisting. But German has his doubts. They will arrive back at Pang Bosch without any money, and what's more, without having done anything or helped anyone. Up until now. German had heard of this disabled Sherpa. He was one of the best guides on Everest, Lakpa, an exceptional Sherpa. You could ask the impossible of Lakpa. For example, he was asked to carry a radio transmitter to the top of Everest so that the conquerors could proclaim their victory the next day. <laughs> Tajime, 
いやいやいやいやこれで Lakpa is going to see his son in Dingbosh. It's a long way, along a very steep route. He takes advantage of a ride on Kama, who this time walks on without showing any resistance. Finally, it's home sweet home. Even at 4,000 meters, there's nowhere quite like home. A nice stall. Home sweet home. A place where secrets are shared, tales are told, and new plans are made. Nima and German's plan is to prepare a special meal, which they will offer to the nuns at the convent for Kama's presentation ceremony. The meal of barley fritters will be shared. The lodge's guests get to taste them that evening. And the next day, German and Nima will take the rest of them to the nuns at the convent. Only Nima and her parents accompany German to Kama's consecration ceremony. German has said little about it in the village. He is afraid of the evil eye on Karma. He needs the reassurance of this ceremony because they don't know Karma's place in the cycle of reincarnation. The presents and food are discreetly placed at the entrance to the convent. Nima serves tea made of yak's milk to the officiants. Their litanies link the animal to its name and so establish a favorable destiny for Kama and her owners. The gifts of silver are there as backup. Simple thanks in advance. Ah. Uh... 
This animal is strange. It has an odd get-up. We don't really know what it's for, but the teacher will explain it to us. <laughs> then German asks a favor of these talented observers. He asks them to draw him a picture of a horse for hire to hang on his house. Dancy received a worrying phone call. Shopadawa is asking for help. His eyes have been burned by the sun, and because of the fog, the helicopter has refused to go. He wants to come down. German says he will go. He goes with Kama and two bales of hay. Everest Base Camp is at 5,400 meters. It will take at least two days, probably three to get there. Karma slowly acclimatizes to the reduction in oxygen. In fact, Kama does not suffer from the altitude as long as there's food and sun. 
but above 4,700 meters, the stock of hay runs out. The vegetation becomes sparse, and the sky clouds over. They merge into a world of snow and clouds. The refuge at Low Bush is not visible. It has dissolved into the fog. But for Dower's sake, who is blinded and waiting for them at base camp, they cannot give up. They must go on. Bush, 5,000 meters. At 5,000 meters, the bad weather can last for a day, or two days, or a week. 10 centimeters, or a meter of snow may fall, but they stay cheerful in adversity. Karma and German take the bad weather in their stride. <laughs> the following morning, the sky clears. Good fortune seems to have returned. A magical light gives shape to the icy mass. German is full of hope, though he is still penniless. Karma is not phased by the crevasses but the ground beneath her is unstable. At the top of a sweep of ice, the summit of Everest is a mirage, a black triangle dominating the frozen penitents and jumble of seracs where processions of climbers try to find their way. Dawa must have come down this way too. Arriving at base camp is a strange experience. At 5,400 meters, many people lose their lucidity and their speech becomes incoherent. Dazed, they keep quiet and look in silence at the person they have been waiting for, and then walk away to perform Herculean tasks on the moving ground, which is shrinking and each day sliding a little further towards the sea. At high altitude, the sun's rays are reflected off the snow. This excess of light can burn your retina in just a few hours. If you lose your glasses, as Dower did, you must take great care, because snow blindness is painful, and such an attack can be irreversible. The Sherpas helped Dower down the ice face, but the Western team who employed him won't come down any further. They have gone off up the mountain, preoccupied with trying to reach the top.
Despite her lack of food, Kama fulfills her role superbly. She doesn't shy or slip or jolt along. It's as if she is aware of her responsibility. After 18 difficult hours, Dower is safely back down. Having rescued Dower, German will, in due course, receive a substantial sum of money from the expedition's insurance. Treated in good time, Dower shouldn't suffer any serious consequences. <laughs> For German and his family, things have taken a turn for the better in these few months. Kama's success has set an example. Both the mayor and German's advice are much in demand. It's not what he expected. His good idea of a horse for hire quickly spawned others. More and more people are becoming horse riders and hiring out horses, improving life for some families and generating the first signs of prosperity. The horse traders come to check out the valley, smiling broadly. And more and more tourists are enjoying hiring horses. Last, German can reimburse Tsawang, his cousin in Kathmandu. At last, he can celebrate the advent of the first Nepalese Republic, which has just been announced. At last, he can meet his children from school and give them a nice surprise. they can celebrate Buddha's birthday together. Today, it is the year 2,631.
parca parca amata mata tamatang tamatang asun 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 ale belun belun hun hun pet pet